It was a call, calling those black brothers and sisters to their own salvation, calling them to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So we want to take this opportunity before we uh, bring on our beloved brother minister to thank our brothers and sisters who showed their support and came out to be with us on Wednesday evening at the Apollo Theater. As you know, it's a time of year, it's the holiday season. And oftentimes, this time of year, many of black people who are pulling away from old traditions taught to, to them since the time of slavery. Yes, Brother Minister Farrakhan, in his delivery over these airwaves for the last few years, have dealt with certain seasonal changes that we go through. And I remember reading something about six months ago that reminded me of what Minister Farrakhan taught last year on the radio. It was uh, about the season that we're now in called Christmas. Yes, and there were a little black boy, young black man, I should say, who every Sunday afternoon would, you know, tell his grandmother to turn on uh, Minister Farrakhan, turn on Muhammad Speaks to New York. And he would sit there in front of the radio and just listen to Minister Farrakhan teaching. The subjects that Minister Farrakhan is blessed with from Allah's messenger are the type of subjects that are actually character-building subjects, and they're subjects that go right into, it seems, the personal life of black people. We are from among our people. We are our people. So therefore, we know some of the things that you suffer because we have suffered the same. And the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is designed not just for you to hear a spiritual word or learn something of Islam, but to go into the heart and the mind of the black man who is suffering in America, to go into that troubled soul of yours, to, you know, make you uh, come to grips with your own self. So this little young brother sitting there listening to a program, and I know that his grandmother would say, you know, he's so young, I wonder if he understands the weight of the wisdom that Minister Farrakhan is teaching over the radio. This particular Sunday, Minister Farrakhan, a little over a year ago, a year ago now, he was teaching on the Christmas holidays, and he was bringing certain things to the surface. So a little while later, this particular young boy asked his um, grandmother and grandfather if they would take him to see Santa Claus. Quite naturally, the grandmother had thought that the boy, with all of that wisdom from Minister Farrakhan listening to her every uh, Sunday and then listening to him teach on Christmas, that he would be pulling away from that. But the little boy, he was thinking all the time. He had heard what Minister Farrakhan had said, but he wanted to himself go and check this man out that they call Santa Claus. So the first thing he did when he got downtown to one of those large department stores, and he jumped on his lap, he said, I'm going to check him out. He pulled his beard, and there was a rubber band, and when he pulled the beard and let it go, the beard smacked so-called Santa in the face. Then Santa Claus, he commenced to take his belt off, because he was going to spank this little rascal. So by this time, the grandfather came in, and he got involved. And when the peace on earth and goodwill to all men was restored, Santa had a broken jaw, and the grandson and the grandfather were in jail. But it shows you, the point is, that the little young brother was listening. And see, when you hear truth, you want to go check it out. You know, when you hear a man teaching you something every week, week after week, you know, it only becomes natural for you to go and, you know, try out or, you know, look for what you have heard. This is only natural. So it is, I'm saying that to say to our brothers and sisters, as you listen to this program every Sunday afternoon, you heard a program a few weeks ago, Woe to the Cheetahs, which was a program that it, it was right on bead with the black man and the black woman. It was telling you about yourself. Not only have you cheated others, but you have been a cheater against your own self. It was getting right down into where you were at. And it was making you now to reach up and analyze yourself and put yourself on a scale so that you can do better by yourself. This is what Mr. Muhammad is saying to black America. And he has a minister here who is saying it to you every Sunday. His subject last week, they shall no longer endure sound doctrine. It's almost as if the minister is saying to you, you've heard Muhammad. You have heard him teach. You have heard him pour out wisdom to you. Now, what are you doing with the wisdom? Are you now taking the wisdom and going and trying to better yourself and your own people? Or are you sitting on the wisdom waiting for something to happen? So our minister's here this afternoon. And I pray to Allah in the name of his messenger, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, 
that you will open up. And as you listen, take a lesson from that little brother. He listened and he heard what the minister said, but he wanted to go out and see. Well, let me see if this is the truth, what Minister Farrakhan is talking about. I want to check it out for myself. And then once he knew it was the truth, he began to react to that truth. You today, black man and black woman, especially in the city of New York, this mighty city, this international city, this city of communications where you are exposed to more than any people in the country, you have an opportunity now to make a move for all black America if you would just come up out of the filth that white America has you in. There's a man from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad calling the city of New York black people to their own salvation, telling them that Messenger Muhammad loves you brother and sisters. I heard him make that appeal at the Apollo Theater Wednesday night. I listened to some of it this morning and I heard in his voice a man who was sincere actually like they say in the scripture Jeremiah crying in the wilderness crying calling that black man out of the filth of white America telling them that the honorable Elijah Muhammad is your salvation and he is a man that loves you. So listen to Minister Farrakhan this afternoon. Take some time out. Take the pot off, turn the flame down, call a neighbor, sit down and listen to the wisdom that he will bring you from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So I thank you, and let's bring on our beloved Brother Minister Louis Farrakhan. Salam alaikum. In the name of Allah, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, the one God to whom all praise is due, the Lord of the worlds, we thank Allah for blessing us with our beloved leader, teacher, and guide, the messenger of Allah, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. My beloved brothers and sisters, of New York City. We are very happy and honored for this great opportunity to stand before you to represent to you this mighty man of wisdom and power, this mighty man of guidance, this mighty man of salvation for the black man and woman of America, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. This is the season that some say it's good to be jolly. Fa la 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 la, la 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 la. But I don't know whether it's so good to be jolly when the unemployment lines are increasing, the stock market is consistently in decline. There is the three gods plaguing America. Recession, inflation, and energy crisis. The country is confused. They say that the condition economically of America at this time parallels what it was in the 40s. And in a newspaper that I was reading this morning on an airplane coming in from Chicago, I noticed they had, they smell the scent of soup lines. And I read another article showing how the merchants who had filled their stores hoping that the Christmas spirit would be in the people, their expression for Christmas today is the old words of Ebenezer Scrooge, Bar Humbug. Merry Christmas, the people say. And we, the Muslims, ask, what's so merry about it? 
think over my beloved black brothers and sisters and you white people of intelligence. How you make mockery of a divine man of God on a day that you say that he was born. You sell more whiskey, wine, and beer on his birthday than at any other time during the year. There's more drunkenness, more revelry, more debauchery, more filth and indecency practiced by the people on a day supposedly set aside as a holiday, which means a holy day. But there is nothing holy about the 25th of December and the way the so-called Christian people celebrate the birth of a man that they say is the Savior of the world and God in person. We only want a reason on truth. Christmas, you say. <laughs> Joy to the world. The Lord is come. I don't know about that. You will not rejoice when the Lord of truth and righteousness comes. For he would not be a part of your filthy doings and the filthy world and your filthy practice in the name of a noble servant of God. You will not be in joy when he comes and according to what is written in the book of Revelations that when they saw the Son of Man coming, they wailed because of him and they mourned because of him. There was no joy to the world because he didn't come to bring peace to the world. He came to put the world to the sword because the world was a world of evil and rebellion against the divine laws and teachings of God. Let's look at this Christmas. My dearly beloved black, brothers and sisters, my Puerto Rican brothers and sisters. You follow this holiday blindly. Very few people have ever reflected on why they believe what they believe or why they follow the customs that they follow or where the customs came from. Very few people have asked the question, where did Christmas come from? Is it from Jesus? Is it from his disciples? Is it prophesied of in the scriptures? Is it ordered in the scriptures by God that we should follow such tradition or holiday? We challenge all you religious teachers. Go find it in the scriptures where Jesus said, this is the day I was born. I want all of you to have a day of feasting and joy on my birthday. Go find it. Find out where Santa Claus came in at. If it's Jesus' day, how come Santa moved Jesus out? The children aren't looking for Jesus, they're looking for Santa. If you told them Jesus was coming down the chimney, they'd say, send him back. I'm looking for Santa. That's a shame. Look at the lie that you tell. Poor black mother, black father, 
working hard all year long, can't give the children the nice little toys that children desire. You tell them, wait, Sonny. Wait, Lulu. Wait till Christmas time. And if you're a good little boy and a good little girl, Santa's going to bring it to you. And you'll wait till your little boy and girl eyes have gotten drowsy with sleep waiting up for Santa. You tell them Santa won't come as long as your eyes are open. They say, but we want to see him and thank him for what he gave us last year. So when the little baby eyes close in sleep and mom and dad rush to where they have the goodies hidden, bring it all out and place it under a tree and wait joyously around for the children to wake up in the morning and run to the tree and look at what Santa gave them. The parents are not looking upon their deceitful act of lying as a lie. But the parent is a liar. Are you listening, mother? You're a liar, mama. You're a liar, daddy. And then you get a stick and Bust your children's you-know-what when they tell you a lie. But you are teaching and training them up to be liars by your advocating, commemorating, fostering, nourishing, partaking of, preaching and worshiping that which is nothing but a lie in the plainest of language. When did Christmas originate? Does Christmas really celebrate the birthday of Christ? Was Jesus born on December the 25th? Did the original uh, apostles who knew Jesus personally and were taught by him celebrate his birthday on December the 25th or did they celebrate it at all? If Christmas is the chief of the Christian holidays, why do so many non-Christians observe it? Why do people exchange presents with the family members, the friends, and the relatives at Christmas time? Was it because the wise men presented gifts at Christmas? Why are there candles lit in your window? Why are there lights on your tree? Where did the tradition of the tree come from? Why are the little balls on your tree and tinsel on your tree? Why is the virgin mother and her child so talked about more so at any other time than this time right now? The Madonna and her child. Where did that come from? You say, Farrakhan, you're breaking up our holiday. No, just breaking up your ignorance. Now, wait a minute, mother. Hold it. Don't you get to that radio and turn it away just because your son is listening and you had told a lie and got the, you know, the toys all stashed away. Little boy, go and look at your little black mother and your little black father and tell him, Daddy and Mommy, you the real Santa Claus. Where you got the stuff stashed? I don't want you to argue and fight in your home. We just want you to tell the truth. Psychologically, you are training your little black children to look up to white people to give them the things that 
mom and dad could never give them, friend and family could never give them, Santa will. And it's a terrible psychological damage that is being done to our little black baby. And my dear brother, to see you walking around with a red suit on and a white beard and your black face talking about ho, ho, ho. Somebody ought to take a hoe and smack you upside your foolish head. I the ho, ho, ho ringing bell. What a fool they have made you. Got a, a pillow in your stomach and one in your back. And feathers in your head. I'm about ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, everyone. We are all laughing here because we know better. And I hope you are laughing out there too because you are learning better. We don't want you to think that we are making mockery or just trying to blaspheme on a day that you say or you believe is so sacred. But my beloved brothers and sisters and to those whites who listen, If the day is so sacred, will you please check out the way you show respect and honor to the day? And if you are the one that say that the day is sacred, then you are the ones that destroy the sacredness of the day by your unsacred, unholy activities. Now let's go after where it comes from. Christmas. Wonderful word. Christmas. It breaks down to two words. Mass and Christ. It means a mass of people gathered together for the worship of Christ. Christ is that great one who comes at the end of the world of evil. The name Christ in Greek means a crusher. He comes to crush evil, to crush falsehood, to crush disbelief in God, to crush sin and the forces of sin. So here are a mass of people assembled to worship Christ. And therefore you get the word Christmas. When did it start? Jesus didn't bring it in. He didn't tell the people to celebrate his birthday. No, he didn't. No great man of the world of righteousness in the past asked the people to celebrate their birthday. There's only one whose birthday is celebrated. That one that the scriptures foretold who is born, but born to deliver, born to set up a nation, a government of peace and justice, born the Lord of the world. That is the one. But all the holy men of the past never made any fuss over the day that they were born. 
Well, where did this come from? According to the Encyclopedia Britannica in the 1946 edition, it reads on Christmas, Christmas was not among the earliest festivals of the church. It was not instituted by Christ or the apostles or by Bible authority. It was picked up afterward from paganism. End quote. Uh oh. It was picked up from where? Paganism. Let us see if that is true. You say, oh no, I'm not a pagan. You just might be. Did I lose you? I want you to listen. Look at the scriptures. There were shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Second chapter of Luke, the eighth verse. All religious scholars will agree with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that this never could have occurred in Palestine in the month of December. For December in Palestine is a very cold and rainy season which does not permit shepherds to abide in open fields at night. It was an ancient custom among the Jews of the days and times of Jesus to send out their sheep to the fields and deserts about the Passover, which is early spring, and bring them home at the commencement of the first rain. And the first rain starts, the rainy season starts around October. So, Think over this one. The scholars of religion have agreed that if the rainy season starts around October, November in Palestine and no shepherd is abiding in the field during that time because they bring their sheep in from the field and corral them, they will also then agree with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that there is no exact date on the birthday of Jesus. No one knows exactly when that man was born. And all authorities and scholars and scientists of religion and students of the scriptures will agree with Elijah Muhammad that they did not know and do not know when the man was actually born. But there are strong indications from the scriptures and the revelation of Almighty God Allah to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that Jesus was born between the first and second week of September. And all of the scholars agree that he had to be born around that time because the scriptures verify it, but certainly not on December the 25th. Well then, if Jesus was not born on December the 25th, how did the celebration of his birth creep in to the Christian teachings. If you notice, the first, second, third, and fourth century, there was no such thing as Christmas. Christmas began to be celebrated in the fifth century, and it started from the Roman Catholic Church and then spread 
But there is no authority in Scripture for the celebration of Christmas. It started among the Roman Catholics in the 5th century after Jesus was dead. Are you listening? Yeah. Around December the 25th, there were several pagan holidays that used to be celebrated. One of them was called Brumalia, which came on December the 25th. The other was Saturnalia which took place between December the 17th to the 24th. And there is another called the winter solstice. Are you listening? <laughs> These so-called festivals in the pagan world dealt with the pagans' worship of the sun. Now this Brumalia that took place on December the 25th was a festival of merrymaking. And the old pagans used to enjoy this merrymaking, fun making, all of the, you know, playing pranks on one another around this time. So when Christianity finally became the religion of Rome. The Romans did not want to give up of Christ. Since Christ is called the Son, S-O-N, of God, then they said, let us incorporate our worship of the Son God, S-U-N to correspond with our holidays that deal with the worship of the sun. The old pagans used to see the sun fading away, the days getting shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. And as the days got shorter and the sun seemed to be going away from them, they thought that their God was leaving them. So during this time, they would put on lights and light candles and begin to call back their sun god, entreating the sun god not to leave them. And on December the 21st, which is around the time of the winter solstice, the day that the sun actually seems to be standing still, the sh shortest day of the year. And from that point on, the sun begins to return and the days start getting longer from December the 21st. Yes, then it appeared that their sun god was coming back to them, so they kept up great feasts of joy. Thus, in your Christian worship of Jesus, you have the candle lights in the windows. You have the balls on the tree which represent the sun. You have the wreath of holly and the mistletoe and the burning of the yule log. Huh? All of this is nothing more than paganism. The word yule is another word for wheel. And the wheel here represents their worship of the sun. Oh, brothers and sisters. So here you are, 1974, supposedly real devout Catholics, devout Protestants, devout Anglicans, devout Methodists, devout Episcopalians, devout Christians, 
not realizing that you are devout pagans. And you, Mr. Archbishop, and you, Mr. Cardinal, and you, the very Pope of Rome, know that what I am saying from Elijah Muhammad is exactly the truth, but you have kept up your lying and your deceit. Therefore, the truth must come and falsehood must vanish. I want to stop here one moment and show the inherent weakness of the church. The church is like a chameleon. You talk about Jesus, you have no kinship with that man. He was not a compromiser. He was not a weakling. He was not a man who sacrificed his principles on the altar of being accepted by the general populace. He was a man convinced of the truth that he was teaching and a man who died for the truth of what he taught without ever yielding to the temptation of playing ball with the powers that be. But you cannot say that, Catholic Church. You cannot say that, Christian religion. If you were the true church of Jesus Christ, you would stand up against the world and its evil, against these warmongers, these exploiters, these ravagers of the lands and nations of people. But you have no guts to stand because you are the same as the world that you would be standing against. The church has been politicized. The cardinals have been taken over. The bishops and the priests are not of God, but they are of the world. Therefore, if Jesus came to the world, you would not be in joy. He would pull up the skirt of your garment and show the world your filth and your shame. Joy to the world, tis the season to be jolly. Huh. Tra la 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 la. Huh. Not today. Truth has come. Falsehood must vanish. Now, this Sunday, as I am speaking to you, Many of you have left your churches with a great tree right inside the church. Your foolish pastors have stood up singing silent night, holy night. They have little scenes in the church of a woman and her baby. They don't put that woman and that baby stuff on you all year long. Christmas time, they baptize you with this Madonna and her child. Now let's take a peek into the wisdom of Elijah Muhammad and the truth and find out where that came from. One scholar asks the question, if we got Christmas from the Roman Catholics, 
and the Roman Catholics got it from the pagans, where did the pagans get it from? That's a good question. <laughs> the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught us that on the 25th day of December, since it was not the birth of that holy man Jesus, who was born on such day? And what kind of man was that man? And what kind of teaching did he teach? And maybe we can see some parallel, some similarity to his teachings and practice with the current practice of Christmas. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that on the day December the 25th, it is the day of the birth of Nimrod. Nimrod, one of the worst rebels and enemies of God in the history of the last 6,000 years. They say it was Nimrod who was the founder of the Babylonian system that has gripped the world from that time to today. It was Nimrod who organized the system of competition of man rule governments and empires based on the competitive and profit-making economic system. Nimrod built the Tower of Babel, the original Babylon, ancient Nineveh, and many other wicked cities. Nimrod, a name coming from the Hebrew Marad, which means he rebelled, and Nimrod was the great rebel of Moses who cut short, as Muhammad teaches us, the divine rule of Moses and the divine revelation of Moses, which was to last for 2,000 years. But Nimrod was born 300 years before Jesus. And he put an end to Moses' power. And when Jesus was born, the world was in such spiritual darkness that even though the people claimed Moses, they had long forgotten the principles of Moses. So when Jesus told them, I don't come to change the law, but I come to fulfill that which was written in the law. The Jews' ears were so hardened, so in love with filth and indecency and the depth of immorality, so in rebellion against Moses' teaching and the great God Jehovah, and so in tune with Nimrod and his way of rebellion that they hated the fact that a man named Jesus would be born. They hated the fact that a corrector would come to them. Therefore, they were anxious to kill the baby even before the baby was born. Even as they are today trying to get my poor, beautiful black sister to kill her baby before it is born. Huh. I want you to think it over, black woman, as you approach the so-called Merry Christmas. Nimrod, according to what history we have of that wicked man, was so evil, it is said that he married his own mother whose name was 
Semiramis. And after Nimrod's untimely death, his so-called mother wife propagated the evil doctrine of the survival of Nimrod as a spirit being. She claimed that a full-grown evergreen tree sprang overnight from a dead tree stump which symbolized the springing forth unto new life of the dead Nimrod. And on each anniversary of his birth, she claimed that Nimrod would visit the evergreen and leave gifts upon it. And December the 25th was the birthday of Nimrod, and this is the real origin of your so-called Christmas tree. You may say, oh, but that was Babylon thousands of years ago. And I say to you, my beloved black brothers and sisters, that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, look again. A mystery Babylon that the prophets style as a golden chalice, but in it was filth and abominations of every kind. Think over mystery Babylon. Now the book of Revelations is put in the mouth of John. John who saw the end of the present world. John saw Babylon destroyed. Not an ancient Babylon, but a new Babylon. That is a mystery Babylon. A mother of harlots. Mm? So then, if this old system of worshiping Nimrod and the Christmas tree and the pagan worship started from Nimrod, then in that mystery Babylon, you would see that same practice carried out. Hmm? You know, Babylon was a great nation or city. Muhammad, in his book, Message to the Black Man of America, says that ancient Babylon was the most powerful of her day. She was the richest of her day. And her riches increased her corruption. She became corrupt. But in Babylon were the Hebrews, the people of God. Isn't that something? Babylon had world power. The nations of the earth had waxed rich by their trade with Babylon. But the Bible says, O oh, virgin daughter of Babylon, come and sit thou down in the dust. O oh, virgin daughter of Babylon. See, Babylon was the mother. Now there's a daughter that Babylon produced that looks just like her mama. And she's a virgin. Nobody has bothered with her. Nobody has waged war with her and won. She's the virgin daughter of Babylon. But the prophet said, oh, virgin daughter of Babylon, come now and sit thou down in the dust. Let's look at it. Y'all all right? You that have a Bible nearby, go dust it off, will you please? Hurry now and turn to the 10th chapter of Jeremiah and read it along with Brother Farrakhan.
The third verse, it reads like this. For those of you who can't get your Bible, I have one right here. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them for they cannot do evil neither also in it is it in them to do good. It says that these are the ways of the heathen. They go into the forest and cut down a tree. What do you have in your home, black woman? You got a tree. How much did you pay for the tree, sister? Oh, I paid $15, child. I got the nicest tree that they had out there. Sister, you have been made merchandise of. With that $15, you might have been able to stretch your food a little bit longer. You could have bought 10 pounds of Muhammad's Whiting H&G. for six dollars and fifty cents and then had the rest to make that which goes around your fish and that ten pounds would have lasted you right on up through the Merry Christmas. <laughs> but of course you have your tree. Now eat it if you can. Yes, my dear foolish brothers and sisters, you have your lights in the window. And don't they look pretty? But wait till Con Edison sends you your bill. Let's go back to Nimrod and his wife, mother. <laughs> Through her scheming, she became the Babylonian queen of heaven. And Nimrod, under many various names, became the divine son of heaven. And through the generations, in this idolatrous worship, Nimrod also became the false messiah, the son of Baal, the sun god. And in this false Babylonian system, the mother and child became chief objects of worship. The names varied in different countries and language. In Egypt, it was Isis and Osiris. In Asia, it was Sibella and Dioius. In pagan Rome, it was Fortuna and Jupiter Pure. Even in Greece, China, Japan, Tibet is to be found the counterpart of the Madonna long before the birth of Christ. And so during the fourth century, while the Christians were accepting, or the pagans were accepting Christianity, they also put into their worship the pagan worship coming from Nimrod and ancient Babylon. Now, my beloved brothers and sisters, as we close this Christmas message,
My dear brothers and sisters, look at what you're doing. Every merchant is happy because dumb us is spending what we don't have and it'll be next year this time or better till we get out of debt from this year's spending spree. You must run and give a gift. Oh, I'm going to see Aunt Lucy and I'm going to give her this present. I'm going to see Aunt Jo or Mommy and Daddy and all the children and all the merchants now are dying. You notice all the sales that are on now at Christmas time? Usually everything doubles in price and businesses that weren't doing good at all for nine months of the year, they get ready for Thanksgiving and they really give thanks because Christmas is right around the corner and they can go home filled with goodies while the poor have their Madonna and their baby Jesus and their poor broken spirit with a wine bottle or a whiskey bottle 